In order to get started on internationalizing your code, you need to understand the functions that WordPress provides to help you with this process. In this lesson, you will learn about the most commonly used internationalization functions in WordPress, with examples of how to use them in your code. Whenever you find yourself writing a string of text that will be displayed to the user, you should use the WordPress internationalization functions to make sure it can be translated. There are a number of functions available, with each performing a different task related to internationalization. The most commonly used function is the double underscore function. This function takes a string of text and returns the translated version of that string. If no translation is available, it returns the original string. You will notice that this function, as most other internationalization functions, has a second parameter. The second parameter is used to specify the text domain. A text domain is a unique identifier for your plugin or theme. It is used to make sure that the correct translations are used. Both themes and plugins have a text domain field in their header. This is used to specify the text domain for that theme or plugin. Whenever you use a translation function, you should always include the text domain as the second parameter. To see how this works, let's take a look at an example. Start by browsing to the Beginner Developer Learning Pathway repository on GitHub and download the internationalization theme zip file. Then install and activate the theme on your WordPress site and browse to it in your code editor. Open up the themes functions.php file. Inside the functions.php, a JavaScript file is enqueued in the context of the WordPress dashboard. The theme also registers a submenu item in the appearance menu, which registers a theme settings page. If you browse to the theme settings page, it contains a button, and if you click on it, it shows an alert. The alert is handled in the JavaScript file for the theme. In this code, you have a number of English text strings that need to be internationalized. The first step is to internationalize the text strings in the PHP code. To do this, you can wrap any text strings in the double underscore function and specify the text domain. Start by checking the text domain for the theme. For themes, this is in the style.css file, and for plugins, it's in the main plugin file. In this case, the text domain is internationalization. If this theme didn't have a text domain, you would need to specify one. Then update the text strings in the add submenu page function. So the two strings there are the usage of the word internationalization. And we can simply wrap that inside the double underscore function and pass text domain as the second parameter and do that again for the second usage. You can then do the same for the text strings in the display page function. So because this function is exiting PHP and outputting HTML, we will need to wrap the strings we want to convert in PHP tags and then use the echo statement to echo the string, call internationalization function, pass the string as the first parameter and the text domain as the second parameter. So grab it from there, pop it in there and then we can use this for the rest of the strings. Update that. And then update the alert as well. WordPress also contains a shorthand function to echo a translatable string. This function is the underscore e function. 
it both internationalizes and then echoes the string. You can use this function to simplify your code. So back in the editor, we can remove the echo and switch this over to the underscore e function. Next, you need to internationalize the text strings in the JavaScript file. To do this, there is a JavaScript equivalent to the PHP double underscore function, which is available in the WordPress internationalization object on the front end. To ensure you can use this function, you need to update your NQ scripts function to require the wp-i18n package as a dependency. This will ensure that your JavaScript code is only loaded when the wp-i18n package is loaded and the object is available. So if we grab the package there, we can either add or update the list of dependencies for the script. Then you need to call the WP set script translations functions for your script you want to translate. This function takes the handle of the script and the text domain as parameters. This will load the translations for the script. So we'll copy this code out and after WP and Q script, I'll update it with the script handle and the text domain. With this done, you can then set up and use the double underscore function from the WPI18N object to translate the text string in your JavaScript file. So you could do something like this, const double underscore equals WPI18N double underscore and then call it in the usual way, making sure to specify the text domain. If you refresh the page, you won't immediately see any changes and all the functionality will still work as expected. However, if someone wanted to, they could now generate the English language file for this theme based on all the internationalized text strings to allow for them to be translated. If you're developing a block for the block editor, you can also use the JavaScript translation functions in your blocks JavaScript to internationalize any text strings in your block. All you need to do is import the relevant functions from the WordPress IATN package. This lesson only covers a handful of the available internationalization functions. For more information on all the available functions, check out the internationalization section in the Common API's handbook of the WordPress developer resources.